You have to be resilient, okay? So the biggest problem in door to door, I don't even know if I spelled that right. So the biggest problem in door to door is this. They go knock, and there's the sec like we're naturally trained as humans to be like, like Russell, come just be like kind of a dick. Like if I were to knock the door. Hey, what do you want? Hey, sorry to you. Um, I'll be super quick. Uh, we're here to help you. We're not really interested. Well, yeah. that's fine. If you just give me like two minutes, like, I, I, I'd really busy. love to. We're, we got to go. But I really appreciate you coming by. Uh, that's okay. I'll come back in another time. Yeah, maybe? They, yeah another <laughs> time. Maybe. Okay, thanks, man. We'll, we'll talk soon. <laughs> that's what most people, that's the natural human way of conversing, okay? A door-to-door -door personnel and personality is I'm in charge, step into my office, which is your doorstep, and I don't take no for an answer. Homeboy watched Tommy Boy last night. Zach was like, you guys remember that scene in Tommy Boy? When he's like, we don't take no shit from anybody. We don't take no... Prisoners. <laughs> no prisoners! <laughs> what is it? He's like, damn it. <laughs> Tommy Boy's like, no. Oh, he's like, that's it. We don't take no for an answer. Uh, but like... The 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 door to door mentality is you have what we call selective hearing, and you just don't hear no, the way that normal people would hear no. So let me give you the funny example. So you I, you're eating dinner and and I knock your door and normally people would be like, well I'm eating dinner, right? So the way I hear that is like, oh no I'm not hungry, like sorry. Um, anyway what we're doing like like <laughs> where they're saying like. I just told you I'm eating dinner. Like, I, oh, cool. Like, what you guys have for dinner? Where, what is most people hearing? Go away, I'm busy, you're eating dinner. I'm just hearing, thanks for telling me. Like, I'm not hungry. Like, I know you didn't invite me, but that's me. No, okay. Anyway, what we're doing, and I just keep going. If somebody says I'm not interested, I go, well, of course, I'm not interested either. We haven't even had this conversation yet. <laughs> there has been no conversation. I would be interested in nothing when nothing is there to be interesting. Yes. So I'm going to keep going until it becomes interesting, and then you will be interested once we get there. Yeah. That's resilient. And so he says, I'm busy. I go, of course, everybody is so busy when it comes to buying shit that they don't know what it is. I'm busy in the mall, too. And the guy's like, hey, you want to buy some lotions? It's like, of course I'm busy. Anything but you right now. I'm busy tying shoes or something like like. That is fine, like, but if you start to buy into their bullshit and they're like, I'm busy, and you're like, oh, okay, I'll come back at a good time for you, you're never, <laughs> like, like, that is not resilient. And this is the way that you think about it, is we call this empathy versus sympathy, okay? So empathy versus sympathy, does anybody know the difference? Uh, yes. Empathy is... Um support for something you can relate to, correct? And yeah, sympathy is about, something you yeah, don't support that you can't necessarily relate to. Yeah, so empathy is like, I'm like, I'm right there with you, and sympathy is like, I hear you, and that sucks. That I don't so, understand. But I don't understand. So empathy in sales scenario is a little different, because watch this. You say, empathy, selling with empathy is when they say, I'm busy, you're like, I totally understand but if I don't help you with your roof right now, no one will. And so this is way more important and urgent than anything that you're doing. And I would be doing you a complete disservice if I walked away from here and allowed you not to get your roof replaced and get screwed over by the insurance and have some other crappy roofer that's not me come by and sell you at a different time and not fix the problem at hand. And so I'm more committed to that right. than whatever it is you're doing because I care about you. What if you had that mentality? Yes! And I had the passion and the energy to be like, and I don't sound like Billy Mays when I knock. I'll actually show, I'm actually really Billy kinda, Mays. Yeah, I'm like, I've got a lot of energy in here because I'm speaking, but when I knock, I'm just like, uh huh, not buying your bullshit in my head. Here I go. So if I were to roll, like, it, like give me rest, give me, I'll show you the empathy, okay? Resilience. So I knock. 
Hey, can I help you? Hey, sorry, Buggy, you the homeowner here? Yeah. Perfect. I'll yeah. be super quick. I'm sure you're super busy, right? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm, actually, I'm actually running out to another appointment, too, so I'll make it quick. Um, what we're doing is simple. We're actually getting up on everybody's roof. We're inspecting them today. So you're just next up on your list. You're Russell, right? Yeah. Cool. I just want to make sure I have the right house. Did Terry tell you I'd be stopping by, right? No, he no, didn't. he didn't. Okay, I'll make sure I talk to him about that. That's crazy. I thought he was gonna like let you know. Yeah. But I'll hop up there. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do an inspection. We're gonna run a report. I'm gonna drop that off at you, and then we're gonna see if we're gonna need any problems as far as damage and stuff. I think we're good on that. I know most people did. Like I said, I'm running by um, the whole roofs, every every roof in the neighborhood. You're just next on the little list. So is the best side to put the ladder on this side or this side? Which side's the best? Uh, I don't get on this the roof. side. Most people do this side. Sure. So I'll be back in a minute. I'll show you that report when we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Did I buy into anything he was going to, or could he ever even said anything? Yeah, couldn't get anything in. I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my job. Let me do my job. So now I hop up off the roof, right? So I do the inspection. Now this is where they're like, can you help us with the claim filing part? So here's where most people, so be a hard customer, Russell. Yeah. So we get off the thing, and maybe if you want to move it, you can shift it over or something. Um, okay, so we get off the the roof, right, and I have damage, okay? So most of the time you do it on your phone, right? So a couple ways. I mean, the, the, I'll give you like a 30-second pitch. But at the end of the day, I want to bring it up like this. I'm just going to pretend these are pictures of damage. Um, okay, so I hop up off the roof. Here's your process, okay? Knock. And he's going to be kind of resilient, like, oh my gosh, why? I, I didn't know I wanted to do all this stuff, like, whatever. So I have to take charge, because it's like, it's up to me to get him to file a claim. Because what do homeowners want to do? Good oh, job. I'll do it on my own. Oh, I'll call them. Don't worry about it. Let's not do it right now. I'm not worried about it. It's not a big deal. Right? They're going to give you all those types of things. So I need to know that that's what they're going to be and say, and I need to take charge. Because if I don't have empathy... And I just am like, oh, yeah, you're right. Right now isn't probably a good time to call your insurance. And right now you probably are busy. And right now you probably don't know if you really want to do this or not. And I start to buy into that story. I'm fish out of the water. I don't know the clothes of these things. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Resilience is the key. Ready? So I hop down. I'm like, hey, Russ. Um, it's crazy. Like, I was up there, and I was, like, crossing my fingers. I hope I'm not find anything. But unfortunately, we have found some stuff. Let me show you what we got. Um, so if you look at this and this and this, uh, we've got... Basically, look right here. I go through and I make the story, right? I'm like, see, did, did you see even this like microfibers like down there? See how that's even broken? Mm -hmm. Like that's when we know that it's a big deal, and that's what the insurance is going to look at. Gotcha. The big problem is, is most people don't want to pay for roofs, and they know here in Texas that if I can find an act of God to pay for my roof where the insurance covers it, I'm going to take advantage of that because you don't want to pass up that and be negligent and wait for something else to like you need a new roof and then them not wanting to pay for it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what we're going to do today, so now let me take the assumptive resilient approach. So I'm going to do this whole spiel, blah, 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 I'm going to go into it. But watch how I sell. Ready? Here comes the sales part. I say, so it's a really simple process. Today I can't get a yes. All I want to do is get a second set of eyes, which is your insurance adjuster, to validate what I saw so that we're both on the same page and they know about it, okay? Mm -hmm. So how that process works is we get on the phone with your insurance, we just say, hey, insurance guy, can you come check this out too? And then we just basically say, as long as they agree with what we saw, we end up being your contractor, and then we just send an agreement to say, we'll do the work if there is work needed to be done. I think there is, but let's get their set of eyes on that. How we do that is we just call them and set up a claim. Does that sound good? What's the insurance company yeah. that you got? Who do you got? Who do, who do you I, have for your insurance? The well, State Farm, I, is it Allstate? I don't remember who, I think, um, I want to say it's, uh... Farmers? Farmers? Babe! Farm <laughs> Babe! Uh, farmers? Farmers. Yeah, I think it's cool. farmers. I, got I, I don't think, I think we're, like, we'll just call it in, because I don't, I don't, I'm just kind of uncertain about the whole claim process, but I'll just call it yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, I'll walk you through, that's actually why we're here. Um, I got farmers on speed down real quick. Boom. Just start calling them. Second I know who it is, great, I'm calling. It might be like, is it okay that I maybe would call your insurance company and see if I could maybe file a claim? No. What do I do? Oh, got it on speed dial real quick. It was Russell, right? Yeah. And your last name, what was it? Brewer. I'm Sam. Nice to meet you, dude. Have you guys looked here for a long time? Yeah. And I've become the coolest dude for him. I make a friend. See what I'm doing? And I filed a claim. Hey, I'm here with Russell. Uh, we're just going to file a claim real quick. We just got maybe some potential hail damage. 
Um, yeah, you can verify with them. Just say your name and say it's cool. You can talk to me. Uh, yeah, this is Russell Brewer. <laughs> cool. And just say, yeah, you can talk to Sam. Yeah, you, you can talk to Sam. Cool. Thanks, dude. Who's in charge right now? You. Did it naturally come to me the first week to be like I am right now? No. Is it natural for normal humans to talk to him like I'm talking to him? No, no it's uncomfortable. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this with a real customer. Who's feeling that right now? Like, this is pretty damn aggressive. This is pretty damn unnatural. I'm kind of going over the top right now to simply show you the really where it could go. But I'm also showing you how you guys could go make twenty, thirty thousand dollars a day doing this job. So it's like, well, you don't have to, you can find any grasp in between here or here, but I want to teach you guys how to be like resilient door knockers versus like weak door knockers, where it's like, well, you know, um, I mean, if, it, if, if you got a minute, we can maybe try right now. Oh, you want to call me? Yeah, call me. Okay, here's my card. You know, call me when you got um, on a claim. That's the natural, like, I don't want to put anything in an uncomfortable situation, so I'm going to let them drive. Who was driving? I was driving. Cool? Thanks, Russell. Yes. What did we learn from this whole thing? What did we learn so far?